You know, every time I do one of these episodes, I am just simply impressed with the performance of the quality of ninjas who compete in the National Ninja League. And this week is no exception. That's it. There's, there's no joke this week. Hello, my name is William, and welcome to Ninja Lab. Once again, I'll be taking you on a journey through the elite division of the National Ninja League, now in its sixth season. And we're going to be taking a look at six different qualifiers in this episode, starting with the Warrior Factory, Rochester. For the elite female division, in second place was Jennifer Stefano. Warrior Fitness started things off with a ring swing that turned into a barrage of precarious balance obstacles. Early on, the course was a real test for your load over body strength. And Jennifer was able to get through the first gauntlet of balance obstacles and then get through the thick trapeze bars. Unfortunately, when she was faced with another balance obstacle, this crazy looking obstacle where they have steps that rotate forward, it, it, I haven't seen anything like it before, but unfortunately she was just unable to maintain her balance and she got literally tripped up and went down on that portion of the course. Yeah! And in first place was Sarah Catone. Sarah had a slight hiccup in the very beginning of the course when she had to use her tippy toes to get through the beginning of the rings, but you know, she was able to overcome her height and she was able to make it through the early balance areas a little bit faster than Jennifer did. And when she got to those dangerous looking tilting step setup, she was able to amazingly get through that obstacle with calm, patience, and determination. I was really impressed with how she handled that obstacle. And she was able to handle the next pipe hold obstacle, which featured a, a gnarly sideways jump. And she looked like she could have gone far in the course, but unfortunately, she literally slipped on a banana peel as she had to go up a banana grip hold devil step obstacle and fell halfway through. And, oh, it was so heartbreaking. But fortunately, Sarah does qualify for the New England Regional Final. For the adult male division, in second place was Ryan Sanders, who previously qualified for the New England Regional through the Warrior Factory Buffalo Qualifier. Ryan showed why he is one of the favorites of the Warrior Factory Qualifiers, as he was able to show incredible body control through much of the course. This whole course was long and challenging. And Ryan was able to even defeat a very challenging cannonball obstacle where you have to move the cannonballs using these claw grips that are on them and just he was able to land on the landing pad perfectly. I, my mind was blown seeing this. He is definitely someone to look out for. But unfortunately for Ryan, the course had a five minute time limit and he just ran out of time. He had to rush the obstacle immediately after the one I just mentioned, which was a giant uh, cannonball cross. He cleared that with about a second left on the clock, and there was just not enough time to attempt the 18th obstacle of this course. And in first place was Aiden Wood. The young Aiden was simply phenomenal through this course. Well, mostly, technically. This course was 20 obstacles long, and I don't know if anyone would have been able to do it with a time limit of five minutes. It, it was very tough, but Aiden was ultimately able to get through the obstacles that he did at a faster pace than Ryan. 
especially the zigzag salmon ladder that they had. He, his pace was much faster at that point. So this gave him enough time to complete the 18th obstacle, the jumping bars. However, when faced with obstacle 19 of 20, he had to take on this bizarre looking nunchuck barrel roll or something and he just slipped off right away and I can't even fault him for it. It just, it looked tough. This whole course was tough and honestly both Aiden and Ryan should be commended. Aiden previously qualified at Warrior Factory Syracuse so there seems to be something with the two of them and their ability to do well at Warrior Factory gyms. That means Justin Visco qualifies as well for the New England Regional. Are you one of those people who watches these episodes and think to yourself, man, I really wish I could compete. Well, you can. Go to NationalNinja.com and look at the upcoming qualifying events happening all around the country, except for the ones that aren't allowed to happen due to COVID restrictions. But if there is one available near your location, why not sign up and compete? You never know. You may be qualifying for the regional finals and possibly even the world championship for the National Ninja League. Now, let's take a look at the results for Sam San Warriors. For the elite male division, in second place was Jacob Cantrell. Man, Sam San was not messing around with this particular course. It was just filled with a gauntlet of some heavy grip obstacles. For example, we had a flying squirrel into some tougher flying squirrels. And then to make it even harder, we had these vertical wingnut type obstacles that were referred to as the emojis. It was intense grip strength and Jacob was able to get through all that. However, when having to hold on to these little books and make a lache, he unfortunately was unable to maintain his grip from getting to these one to the other but the good news is that he was good enough to qualify for the south central regional finals and in first place was nathan haney Nathan was determined to get first place and knew that he had to go fast in order to achieve it. He was looking very confident early on through some of those tough grip obstacles and was even able to clear the first set of books. But unfortunately, in the second half of the obstacle when he had to transfer to a very small cliffhanger type ledge he was unable to maintain his grip and he went down at that point of the obstacle but because he was faster than jacob he earns himself first place and 10 points it was truly a tough course but a really nice looking course from sam sand and because nathan had already qualified karsten williams qualifies for the south central regional final yeah Don't forget, you can watch all the runs mentioned in this episode in full on this YouTube channel. If they haven't been uploaded yet, they will be uploaded very soon. So make sure you subscribe to know when those runs go live and watch bonus runs and past runs from this season and seasons past all on this YouTube channel. Check out the playlists for curated videos and make sure you subscribe if you haven't already. There's so much content here, why would you want to stop watching? Now let's look at the results for Strive Ninja Fitness. For the elite female division, in second place was Casey Rothschild. Casey is doing her best to try to maintain dominance in female division, but this time around she had to settle for just second place but she looks so strong on this course i gotta say strive had probably one of the toughest looking body props i've ever seen and she was able to navigate her way through that and was even able to skip a rung on that upstream salmon like 
type uh, obstacle that they had. It was very impressive his run overall. But unfortunately, the course had a three minute time limit and when Casey was on the candlestick, she unfortunately just ran out of time. She tried rushing to get towards the end, but just couldn't bridge the gap far fast enough. And in first place was Addie Herman. Similar to Casey, Addie continues to establish dominance in the female division by securing another first place victory. Addie was also looking extremely strong on this course, and perhaps the biggest difference was her performance on the upstream salmon ladder as she was able to do a major skip on that course and was able to save so much time which made a big difference because she got hung up on the candlesticks at the very end of that obstacle but she was able to clear it with about five seconds left on the clock and that clearing of that obstacle is what secured herself first place, which was such a big deal. Addie is definitely someone to look forward to for the regional finals. Because both Addie and Casey already qualified for the New England regional final, Alessandra Murto qualifies as well. For the elite male division, in second place was Lucas Reale. The ever impressive Lucas knew that time was of the essence as demonstrated by the female results and the men really put the pedal to the metal when taking on this course. Lucas was flying through many of the obstacles going for a big skip similar to what Addy did on the upstream salmon ladder and he was determined to get through the course as fast as possible. Unfortunately, when faced with some gnarly looking vertical holds, his grip ultimately gave out. But I mean, he was already, you know, 15 obstacles in. This was obstacle number 16. It's like yeah, you can only expect him to do so much. But the good news is that Lucas qualifies for the New England Regional Final. Awesome. Get ready, folks. You're going to be hearing this a few times this episode. And in first place was True Becker. I don't, I don't even know how True is doing it at this point. I, I've talked about how he's done so well this entire season so far. And this is only episode 8. True was able to almost match Lucas pace for pace throughout the entire course. If you compare the two of them, their approaches to each obstacle were incredibly similar. Only a few differences here and there. The biggest being that he almost lost too much time in the cliffhanger area, and he almost ended up failing at the exact same place that Lucas did. But the good news is that he reached that spot approximately seven seconds faster than Lucas did, which secured him first place once again. It is truly amazing how talented this guy is. And because True already qualified, Matt D'Amico qualified for the New England Regional Final. Hey! Do you want to watch the qualifiers live as they happen? Well, guess what? You can. Most of our qualifiers are streamed live on the National Ninja League Facebook page. All you have to do, go there, give us a like, and you'll always be notified when a live stream is happening. Doesn't matter what gym or what age group, unless the gym chooses to stream on a different platform like YouTube, you will find it on our Facebook page. Now let's take a look at the results for Ultimate Obstacles, their third qualifier. For the Elite Female Division, in second place was Sophia Laverle. Sophia was able to get through the Sonic the Hedgehog obstacle, but unfortunately lost her balance on the peg balance and fell on the course.
And in first place was Casey Rothschild, who we get to talk about again in this episode. Casey was able to get past the balance section that tripped up Sophia, and we all know how strong Casey is and that she could definitely go far on a course, as we saw earlier in this very episode. But unfortunately, when taking on the ring slider, she was just unfortunately unable to bridge the gap, and her run was cut tragically, tragically short. For the elite male division, in second place was Luke Dillon, who has become quite a mainstay on this program. And honestly, based on past performances, Luke should have gone further than he actually did on this course. I mean, just look at how well he was doing on the first half of the uh, of this course. It, it was simply just picture perfect throughout the whole thing. But unfortunately, when it came to the unstable bridge, he just got stuck in no man's land, which is the one place you don't want to be on a type of liché obstacle like that. He was swinging in all the wrong ways, he couldn't get his body the right direction, and unfortunately either he ran out of gas or he just couldn't make the jump. And unfortunately he went out at the 10th obstacle. And in first place was True Becker. Yes, again. True did not have the same problem on the unstable bridge that Luke did and was able to clear that obstacle. And then he was able to take on all the remaining obstacles of the course, which included Kane Lane, a cliffhanger, and another one of the craziest body props I've ever seen. In the end, True was able to take down all 18 obstacles of the course get up the warped wall and finish with a time of 4 minutes and 3 seconds, cementing him as one of the favorites in the New England region. Because both True and Luke both qualified for the New England regional, Vincent Clapper and Peter Dillman qualify as well. Hey, yo, the National Ninja League is also on Twitter and Instagram. If you haven't, please make sure you go follow us there too. We are at Twitter at National Ninja and at Instagram at National Ninja League. Now let's take a look at the results for Stanford Ninja Academy. For the elite female division, in first place was Sophia Lavalle. Sophia was looking good early on, but unfortunately, Kane Lane had other decisions and she slipped up on that obstacle. Nice! For the elite men division, in second place was Nolan LaJoy. The Stanford Ninja Academy course was hard very quickly because it featured obstacles like cane lane, swinging cliffhangers, and moving cannonballs, all very challenging grip obstacles. And Nolan was able to handle all that and more, like the bookmarks. But Unfortunately, when face to face with a very thick nunchuck, Nolan was unable to maintain his grip and he slipped right off and took him out at that point of the course. Get this, folks. In first place was True Becker. What a way to end 2020 by simply just winning a bunch of NNL qualifiers. 
I think it's safe to say that True is one of the favorites to get the automatic buy to the World Championship because this guy just keeps winning. It seems like every episode, I'm talking about him winning. And in this one, he put up another stellar performance. He went further than any other competitor on this course. A, a stacked course that was full of so many challenging obstacles along the way. But unfortunately, he just couldn't beat the final obstacle, which was not just a warped wall, but a freaking mega wall. Like... <laughs> I can't even fault him for not making up that thing. It's massive. But ultimately, he couldn't get it, but he still gets first place and 10 more crucial points. And in addition, both Blake Faro and Lucio Batista qualify for the New England Regional Qualifier as well. Yep, you saw it right, folks. It's true. It really is true. Unbelievable. But we're going to wrap things up with the results for Ultimate Ninjas Chicago. For the Elite Female Division, in second place was Maggie Owen. Man, the Ultimate Ninja women certainly came to play as they did fantastic overall on the course. Maggie was the second best of these Elite Females as she was able to take on some pretty interesting and challenging obstacles, including an obstacle called Flip the Switch, which is a spinning cliffhanger thing. And the course also includes a pipe slider, which always gets points in my book because I love that obstacle. And they even have a unique Bosu Ball sex double step type obstacle, which is very interesting. Ultimately, Maggie reached the 13th obstacle, which unfortunately included some nunchucks that she simply wasn't able to keep a grasp on and fell at that point of the course, allowing her to get second place, qualify for the North Central Regional, and just edge out her tutor, Jesse Lebrecht. Overall, a great performance by Maggie. And in first place was Megan Rowe. Megan's run was, I mean, simply put, very similar to Maggie Owen's run. It's actually very hard to tell the two apart. Both these young women are truly the future of ninja as a sport. But I guess the biggest difference was that Megan was just a little bit faster than uh, Maggie, as she was approximately 12 seconds faster to reach the 13th obstacle as they both fail the exact same point. Uh, those darn nunchucks just tripping up these women. I think the main difference had to be the flip the switch obstacle as it seemed like Mag Megan got through that just a little bit faster. And ultimately, that's where it got her 10 points instead of 9. And they both qualify for the North Central Regional Final. For the elite male division, in second place was Cameron Baumgarner. Cameron exploded onto the course and showed why he is someone that you should not be overlooking when it comes to Ninja Warrior, as he was able to get deep into this course and further than most people were able to. Early on, however, he did have a bit of a scary slip on Pipe Dream, but fortunately, he was able to recover and complete the obstacle, which did lead to some funny banter between him and the announcer. Now, he was able to complete those twisted twins nunchucks that uh, the ladies that we mentioned failed, and my goodness, that was such a difficult obstacle. I'm not surprised that only three people cleared it. But ultimately, the next obstacle, Addiction by Subtraction, took him out, where he just with the rings in hand, he missed his target and fell on that portion of the course. But he qualifies for the North Central Regional, so hooray! Yes, come on. Here we go. Yes! Come on, Cam. Come on, Cam. You can do this.
And in first place was Marquez Green. While Marquez might not be a name that most people are familiar with, he was able to defeat everyone in an elite selection of ninjas, which, including the names already mentioned, included names like Michael Salinzi and Jamie Ron. And Marquez was able to get further in the course than anyone. He was the only one to complete addition by subtraction and was able to hook that hook with the ring and get to the final obstacle, which was a cane lane contraption. And Marquez probably could have cleared the obstacle, but time was running down. And with literally less than five seconds left on the clock, he made a jump for the buzzer, but heartbreakingly was unable to clear the distance and failed at the very end of the final obstacle. Oh my god, it was so heartbreaking and to watch. But Marquez is absolutely someone to look forward to when he competes in the North Central Regional Final. <laughs> Thank you all so much for watching. If you haven't, make sure you subscribe and check out the playlist of full runs as well as past episodes of Ninja Lab. Thank you all very much for watching. I'll see you later.